Uh, hi there, friends. Uh, I thought I'd just jump on the video uh, before I head on some holidays uh, and answer a question that has come through in advance of this Sunday's sermon, a Sunday's sermon on chapter 1 from verse 10 and following. Uh, the question was in response to, I think, this section of chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. Let me read it to you. Uh, chapter 1, verse, um, uh, verse 10. Uh, and then I'll read a few other little verses along the way. Chapter, chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Uh, my brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas, and still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? And the question that has come through, a few people have sent uh, this through to us, is something along the lines of, what does this passage have to say to the existence, the continuing existence of denominations? Is, a, is the very existence of different Christian denominations a contradiction uh, a contravention of this particular passage. Um, maybe I can answer the question by saying, no, I don't think they are in contradiction to this passage, with a little maybe uh, added on the end. Perhaps let me explain. Uh, I do think that the division that does sometimes exist between some denominations is something to be grieved over. We long as believers to be perfectly united in heart and mind. And in fact, that's the vision of Revelation, that one day all God's people will be gathered around Christ's throne alone. But there has never actually been a time in church history, not even in the early church as pictured in the scriptures, in which all the church was one institution enjoying unity. Even in the book of Acts, there was the church in Jerusalem, there was the church in Antioch, and the leaders had to talk with one another and sort through things, but they weren't the one institution, so to speak. They organised themselves very differently. They did their own missions to the remainder of the world, but they were united in the faith, in what they held to be the core truth of the gospel. So that's probably one thing that I begin by pointing out. Secondly, denominations didn't come about simply as a result of ugly divisions and an ability to agree with one another. That is a bit of a narrative, isn't it, that we get told, that we only have denominations because one group thought that they knew better than the other and they couldn't agree, so they split. But that's not, not exactly actually how denominations always come to be. Uh, denominations develop often because the church has grown up in a distinct way in different cultural and geographic locations. Um, even before the Roman Catholic Church or the Anglican Church, there was a church that developed in India. There was a church that developed in China before there was ever a church in England. And each of these different churches that developed in different parts, locations and cultures of the world had their own distinctives and differences to them. They weren't ever completely the same in practice and traditions and the way they organised their life together. Even though they did get together for these councils to show their unity in the Christian faith. That's why we sometimes say the creeds in church, because they are expressions of our unity of the faith, even across denominations. Um, also, some different denominations have developed because mission work has gone to one particular part of the world and been focused on by one particular group of Christians. And so they've developed some distinct characteristics. Uh, different shared histories between, for instance, the church in England and those missionaries who took the gospel to Africa has developed some consistency between the church in England and Africa that doesn't exist, perhaps, say, in uh, even the United States. Uh, there are some similarities between the, our church, the Anglican church here in Australia and Africa, that are more in tune with each other than even churches in the United States that might be culturally more similar to Australia. Uh, and there's also the sense in which 
striving only for outward unity, that is, to have one church institution, can sometimes paper over the reality of the spiritual health of all the different groups within that institution. What is far more urgent for us to be striving for is a unity in the Christian faith. And I think that is particularly focused in the creeds that we say with one another, that people across denominations often can say and declare together with a a unified heart and mind. So I do think that denominations can actually be just a very good and natural response to the fact that churches grow and develop in different locations with different cultures. And that difference isn't a bad thing. However, It is possible to use denominations as a way to exalt ourselves over others, Uh, to say that we ourselves are more faithful to Christ, that we ourselves are more spiritually advanced or have a higher spiritual status than other denominations. And when that happens, I think we are beginning to slip into what Paul warns against uh, in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians.